Hello, my name is Samuel Weiskowi, and today I'll present about the third lab for Physics 2212. Here's a brief overview of today's presentation. So I'll start with the lab goals. Uh, the goal of the experimental portion of the lab was to determine the distance dependence of a bar magnetic field by measuring the magnetic field at various locations. And then we wanted to compare the experimental results of the magnetic field at those locations to a computational model of the same magnet and its field. And as a preview of the results, here is the distance dependence found via the experimental measurements. As for some key concepts, the lab will deal with magnetic fields, in particular dipole magnetic fields, because that's how we'll model our bar magnet. So we'll be using the ideas of on-axis and perpendicular magnetic fields. And these are some equations that will come into play shortly. The experiment itself involved measuring the magnetic field from a bar magnet using a phone app along various locations. So first we oriented the phone with the Earth's magnetic axis to simplify measurements, found the phone's magnetometer chip to know where to measure from, and then measured the distance on various on-axis points and measured the magnetic field along a 45 degree angle from the bar magnet. Here's a picture of the experimental setup. And then as for observations requested in the lab instructions, these are the two that apply to my setup. So when far away, the magnetometer measured a near zero magnetic field in the X direction. And as it was moved closer, the measured X component decreased. That is to say, the magnitude increased, but it became more negative. Here are measurements from the lab, as in uh, various distances and magnetic fields at those distances and their averages. More importantly, we have a graph here that comes from the equation shown above. So initially, we can model the bar magnet's magnetic field, some coefficient, times a distance to a factor m. Using the properties of logarithms, we can get this equation, which we are then able to plot as shown down here. You'll notice from the equation that our slope is n, which is the distance dependence shown here. So as you can see, our distance dependent cal calculated from our measurements is negative 2.6952. And here are values that will be used for our 45 degree angle implementation in the code. A bar magnet can be ma modeled as a magnetic dipole with mu pointing from south to north in a magnetic field that looks like this. Because of this, we can model our on-axis magnetic field starting with the on-axis dipole equation and substituting the value for the distance dependence with our measured value. And then using this altered equation, we can plug in measured values for B and for R to find a value for mu that we'll, we will be using in our code. Now, as for the code, on lines 20 to 21, we create the magnet and define mu's direction. Uh, down here, we should describe the magnitude of mu as measured on the last slide or calculated there and make a vector for mu. And down here, we have an equation for calculating magnetic field. Here on line 48, we have a scaling factor for magnetic field arrows to make them visible. Line 53 is a particular distance measurement from the experiment we'll be using for our various arrows. Uh, lines 58 to 63, we set up some observation locations. And on lines 69 to 77, we create on-axis arrows and print the magnetic field at those locations. We do the same for perpendicular locations on these lines. And then on lines 111 to 113, we include measurements for the 45 degree angle measurement location. And down here, we create arrows representing those located the magnetic field at those locations and print those fields. Here are the re results of the code. You can see in magenta, we have the 45 degree angle fields. In teal, we have the perpendicular fields. And in orange, we have on-axis fields showing the representative dipole magnetic fields. As you can see, the measured value in the experiment for a 45 degree angle magnetic field and the code derived value did differ. And this may be due to various error sources in the experiment, which could include there being nearby electronics, an inconsistent earth magnetic field due to the phone being tilted, and approximate distance measurements due to 
a ruler being relatively imprecise. As for the lab questions, if the phone had not been aligned with the Earth's magnetic field, we would need to know how the phone was aligned with the field so we could properly factor out the Earth's magnetic field from the total measured field. And then if another magnet had been added, we would get a larger magnetic field at all locations due to a larger mu.